This is a short tutorial on assembling the Omni Angle Antenna. The one I have here is the OA50, and this is the way it comes from the box. All this is assembled for you already. As an aside, as I start this, you'll notice the jitterbug finish on everything. This is not the way the metal comes to us from the factory. Uh, it's just part of the fit and finish uh, here at Power Electronics. Now this is the, the matchbox part. This has brass threads inside the matchbox and we also use a Noalox liquid on it which does two things. It acts like a, um, a lubricant to help in the assembly and it also prevents any dissimilar metal oxidation so you're always assured of having a good electrical joint. So you're going to take the, the matchbox. I've got the 1032 screws extended all the way through. I'm going to simply place the matchbox on top of the screws. This is a little bit awkward, but you're going to press it down onto the uh, fiberglass piece. Don't let the screws fall out. And now I'm going to start threading it. They should turn in very, very easily if there's any resistance at all. Remove the matchbox and start over from the beginning. I'll start threading one, then the other one. And then I'm going to fully seat one screw. Tighten it down enough to firmly collapse the split ring lock washers. And then I'll do the second one. So now the matchbox is firmly attached to the square radiator sections. I'll go back and uh, retighten this one. And then we'll go on to inserting the 516 tubes into the antenna. Now, as an aside, when you're shopping for an Omni antenna, there are some very important features you want to look for. You'll notice on here, this is a fiberglass angle, and it isolates the mast, which mounts through here, from the antenna itself. That's very important because if the mast is electrically connected to the antenna, the mast could very well radiate. The length of the mast will determine how much current it draws, but it's going to be wasted power in the vertical field, and it will distort the pattern of the antenna. The second feature is that you must use a ballon on these antennas, just like in a dipole, but it's critical here because you're looking for an omni pattern. This antenna has a built-in ballon, so you don't need to supply it. Now we're going to take one of the 5 sixteenths radiators. This is the way it comes from the factory with this vinyl cap on it. We're going to remove this. Now which side you insert the tube on is going to depend upon how you're going to use the antenna. If you're going to mount it on a tower, you want this mount on the outside. But any other application, you're going to put the tube in on the same side as the mass clamp. It's a very tight fit, a smooth fit. All our holes are milled. There's only about one one thousandths clearance. Now we'll take the second five sixteenths tube and insert it. About one inch is all that's needed. Now anytime you have these rods or tubes bent at all, they will not slip. Now we'll take the nose piece, insert it in one, and now bend the antenna over and insert the nose piece in the second half. It's now locked into place. Some people have asked us, do you need to put a screw into this joint or epoxy it? You cannot move that joint. It is locked. But to tune the antenna, you grasp the tube as though you were going to straighten it and then just slide it in and out. You do it to both sides and when you release it, it locks itself again. It absolutely cannot move. 